Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to rotate using CSS. Okay, so when I say rotate, I'm referring to the ability to apply a 2D rotation to any HTML element. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be covering uh, multiple different CSS properties which all relate to um, rotation. The first one here is the transform property and using the rotate function. So this here is the primary, uh, you know, property to rotate an element. So I'm going to be showing you two different ways to do this, uh, including degrees and uh, and uh, providing a turn value. OK, and the second uh, property here is the transform origin property. So this one here also plays a part in your transformations or your rotations. But this one here allows you to customize essentially uh, where the rotation uh, origin, uh, you know, is. So we're going to be covering that one also. So um, aside from that, I'm also just going to be uh, touching lightly on the um, uh, on the ability to apply a animation or a transition on your rotations to make them look smooth if you wanted to go um, down that path. Okay, so going inside this tab right here, we have this blue square. Okay, so going inside the text editor, essentially we're going to be rotating that square using CSS. So we can see here I've got the div with a class of square and I've applied some CSS properties, just a margin for some space, a width and a height, and of course a background color. So how do we go about rotating this square? If I drop down here, I can uh, put down, or I can specify the transform property right here, and we can set the transform property to use the rotate function. So we can see here, we've got quite a few options when it comes to rotation. Um, I'm gonna be covering uh, the most likely use case that is going to be a 2D rotation. So we're going to hit enter here for the rotate function. And of course, inside here, you're going to provide essentially how much you want your elements to rotate by. So for example, we can say 45 DEG for a 45 degree rotation. If I save this here and go back in the browser and I refresh, we have a 45 degree rotation on that square. Okay, so pretty straightforward so far. We can also apply um, a turn value. So we can say instead of 45 degrees, we can say something like 0.6 turn. And now, of course, as the name suggests, it's going to rotate it uh, by 0.6 of a turn or 60% of a full turn. Go back in the browser, refresh, and we have a slight difference here on that rotation. Of course, this time being a 60% uh, rotation. OK, so um, those are, um, you know, uh, two options there for rotating your elements. Now, of course, keep in mind that you can rotate pretty much any element on the page here. It doesn't need to be a geometric shape like I've done here with the square. You can literally uh, rotate your, your navigation bar if you wanted to. OK, now let's have a chat about the transform origin property. So what does the transform origin do? Basically, it's going to uh, change or it's going to let you set uh, where your transformation origin takes place. So what I mean by that is um, if I hop down here, so actually going back to my uh, my square here, let's make this something like uh, let's do a point. Uh, let's just do a point eight of a turn. OK, so a bit different right here. OK, so we have this turn, right? So um, Essentially, this square here, if I was to remove um, remove the transform property here, we can see that the square goes back to normal, okay? But we can see it's actually rotating here in the center of the actual square. So that right there is your default transform origin. The default origin is going to be the center of your element. So you can actually change this. If I go back in the text editor and change the transform-origin here, to be something like top left, okay? This of course is gonna place my transform origin in the top left, which means if I go back in the browser and I refresh, we can see that now the transformation applies in the top left of your element. Okay, so a much better example of this is gonna be uh, shown by the 
MDN documentation of the transform origin property and we can see here um, it's got even visual examples so in the top left here we can see that the transform origin is going to happen there so we can see basically how that works so um, this is very important especially when you are doing uh, things like fancy HTML elements or charts or pie charts you can use the transform origin to apply a few tricks in order to get your elements to look like what you want them to look like. Okay, so just keep this in mind. It might come in handy for you guys. So we can see you can also provide things like pixel values for that transform origin property, but for the most part, you're probably going to be using the top left or, um, you know, your bottom right or, you know, center, things like that. So basically, you're setting the x axis in the first, uh, you know, uh, value here. And the second value is for the y axis. We can also say something like bottom right. And of course, it's going to work in a similar fashion. Save this back in the browser. Now it's going to be in the bottom right, right here um, for that rotation. So those are very useful properties right there. Now, what about applying a nice animation or transition on your rotation? Well, that is very straightforward. Let's go back inside here. I'm going to remove the transform origin, okay, and drop down and then just say transition. So the transition property here is of course universal, you can use it for uh, many different CSS properties, but in the case of rotation, we're going to provide the transform uh, property right inside here, then just say something like 0.5 seconds. So basically, Whenever the transform property changes on your square here, it's going to take half a second to complete that change, which means you're going to get a nice smooth transition. If I go back in the browser and refresh, we get nothing because of course it loaded up with that change. But if I was to change the transform on the fly and make it something like, uh, let's actually do 1.5, actually it's happening right now as you can see. So. Um, that's basically how it works. So if you change your rotation on the fly, it is going to uh, happen in that smooth, you know, transition manner. So um, that is basically that. So uh, that is how to uh, rotate using CSS. If today's video helped you out, drop a like guys and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.